Whoa, 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 whoa! Jason, you're flying over people. You can't do that. You know that. Yeah, the Neo's Category 1. Shut the front door. Really? So, Jason, you're saying the Neo is a Category 1. What does that mean? Yep, so it's under 0.55 pounds. Right. Which is 249 grams. Um, we have our remote ID module here on the top, and then we have the propeller guards, these ducted propellers. So mm -hmm. you're not gonna cut anybody if you hit them with it. Uh, it's about 150 grams with this guy on it, so it's gonna hurt if it falls on you, but it's not gonna hurt you. Like, it's not All gonna right. permanently injure you. Okay. So. Temporary, maybe. It's pretty light, right? It, it'd be it less is. than getting yeah. hit in the face with a football. So. I hear that chicks dig scars, though. <laughs> yes, I suppose so. Okay. So category one is really just, your drone is really small. Um, it's got propeller guards, it's not gonna hurt you. And mm -hmm. we have the ability to find the operator if they're operating like in a TFR. This is special because it's it's available for everyone. Previously, the category one drone that we had was the Mini 2 from Japan. Uh -huh. It doesn't have remote ID though. Mm -hmm. So now to equip mm -hmm. it, we're over that weight limit. This is going to be basically a out of the box solution that is basically, it's category one you can self-certify if you're part 107. If you're part 107. And that, if I think you're part 107. So that's the key, that's right? That's the kicker, yeah. So if I was flying recreationally, if I didn't have my certificate, could I, fl could I fly this over people? No, so this is part 107 only. Um, it's not actually in 44809 that says you can't fly over people, mm -hmm. but in 44809, there was a, uh, a reg that says you have to follow a CBO's guideline. The CBO guidelines are approved by the FAA and the FAA hasn't approved any of them to allow operations over people. What makes it a category one? Technically, you or I as a part 107 operator makes it a category one. We do, we. What's, we do what's called self-certifying. So the FAA does not approve this or disapprove of this uh, as a category one. That's up to the remote pilot in command. Oh, okay. So there are certain qualities though that make it a category one or make it eligible to be category one. So what are those? So we got our remote ID module on top. We have our propeller guards and then the overall weight. So we're limited to 0.55 pounds or less. Gotcha. So we're well under that here at about 150 grams. So we've got plenty of room. Uh, it's 250 grams is the equivalent weight uh, for 0.55 pounds. Category one. Yes. And not. Yes. So uh, what are the what are the restrictions? This is a category one, but what can we do with this? I mean, can we fly it over 400 feet? No. Can we go over 400 feet? Can we go beyond visual line of sight? What 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 do we get so to do with this? So this category one basically changes nothing right now, other than ops over people, and then you can transit over moving vehicles unless you are in a closed or restricted access site, okay. and everyone is on notice that a drone may fly over them in a vehicle, and then you can sustain flight over vehicles as well. Sustain flight. Yep. So what does that mean, being able to pass over them? How 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 often? How long? How long? Yeah. So there's there's not a time limit. The idea with the transit flight is, hey, I need to cross this road. We're going to cross the road to get to the courthouse, and then I'm mm -hmm. going to fly over people, and that's allowed. Mm -hmm. And then, hey, I'm going to have to cross that road to get back to me to the takeoff and launch point. Um, that's allowed as well. But stopping over that road and hovering and taking pictures and waiting, that is not allowed. Abide, the dude abides, right? Do you think there's a category two or three drone that could possibly get the astronauts back to earth that are stranded up in space right now? Like, do, do you think they have a plan for that? So you mentioned like the Mavic, right? Yep. Would the Mavic or the Avada, which is pretty similar to the Neo in my opinion, it's, it's it's bigger, it weighs more of course, would those ever be able to qualify as as a category one? Will we see that in the future, so category two or three? We actually have seen category two Mavics. It's the Mavic two, uh, 3 Enterprise and the Mavic 3 Enterprise Thermal. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have a parachute on those and the parachute has to plug into the top port. So we have an SDK port for both of those aircraft, uh, along with the Matrice 3D, the dock mm -hmm. drone. Um, we have parachutes for those, and that allows those to be category two and category three, depending on the winds. Now with uh, consumer Mavics, there's no SDK port. Right. There's no available SDK. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we will ever see those as category categorized drones. Mm -hmm. uh, and with the Avada, I, I don't, I don't know for sure. It's over the 250 grams or the 0.55 pound weight limit, um, but it does kind of have the prop shrouds. Now it doesn't have these guys on top. 
Mm -hmm. So you could still get a finger or a, multiple fingers into those propellers. For an Avid 107 user for commercial work, is this a drone for them? Would they want to use this one? Not unless you're flying over people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, From what we've seen with the camera, correct. kind of the quality, right? Yes. Okay. That's all for this video. Like and subscribe. Tell us what you think in the comments below. Check out our full review here. And we have a full free deep dive on pilotinstitute.com. If it's not there now, it will be soon.